Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends. Let's turn us down a little bit since we're back. Hello. Good morning, cat. I rolled over my thread. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, hello, good morning. How are you today? Oh, it's in redeem? Interesting. Did I, I didn't mean to enable it. <laughs> Hi, Aurora. I looked at it and I put it on my thing, but oh, hang on, hang on. Yeah, I haven't activated him yet. I don't know why it's available. Oh, interesting. KCAT, good morning. We need to fix that. I don't know, I don't know who pan, we didn't, we didn't enable him, so I don't understand why that's a thing. <laughs> Let me fix this, let me fix this. Why are they adding, why are they adding stuff to my thing? Yeah, no, 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 no. We, we don't got any, Challenge Pando. No, no, no. When did this happen? I didn't do this. <laughs> We're gonna fix that. I'll have to figure it out. You know what it was? Because I went to go set him up. Pando is a little character that you can, it's like a little pet that you can have on your channel. So we kept joking because, yeah, like a digital pet. Um, but I was looking into them and I guess there's a little ghost we could use, but the only dog they have is a bulldog and I'm like, I don't know that, that doesn't look anything like shadow. So it felt rude to include that But I guess we could give him I don't know. Maybe next time I will Sort that out <laughs> Like a Tamagotchi. Yeah, 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 definitely Let me hang on. Let me give those back to you Aurora because I'm like we've not enabled Pando yet. Anyway, how, how is everyone? <laughs> I'll work on that. Maybe we'll put little ghost pando on for Thursday. Okay, that shouldn't show up anymore. Let's check, let's check. Oops, wrong one, wrong one. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> pando, Pando's gone. We'll fix it, we'll fix it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Aurora. But anyway, how's everyone doing? I hope you are well. Things are going good. I feel like the UK has their gray filter on outside, um, which is annoying. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know, but that's it's like normal, it's normal state of being. So I guess we can't really blame it too much. But Shadow and I went on a forest adventure today because I felt like both of us needed it. <laughs> Cause I've just been like, I don't know, I had a really good weekend and then the last like day or so I've just been like blah and I'm like, this isn't good. We need to fix this. And so we went to the forest. Also, you can see guys, I've made more progress on this and that's because I decided I didn't want to spend another entire stream working on the satin stitch. I know you guys love this and this has been such, you know, exciting and stimulating content for you. But I figured um, maybe we could move on <laughs> at some point. So during, I went and watched um, Saul's Sunday um, Monty Python sketch evening and I worked on it for the entirety of the two hours. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I worked on it for the entirety of the two hours and this is what we came up with, which is really nice. I'm really happy with it, um, but it's definitely a good thing that I did work on it because I feel like we would have been here for another million years. <laughs> Watch part of Soul's Union. Yeah, you had to like remind me a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it was really good. Honestly, it flew by, truly. It was wild because I was like, okay, I'm gonna start working on this. And then watching the sketches, loving life. And then it was like, okay guys, like this was great. Let's raid out now. And I'm like, oh my God, 
that flew by. It flew by. It was really awesome though. I think he's having a bit of issues though because he wants to upload the um, the video, like the VOD to I think YouTube and stuff. And so there's a lot of copyright stuff going on right now. Um, I think he had to just splice together all of the, um, whatchamacallit, all the skits that everyone else did. And then that should be fine. But yeah, so this, this was the result of two hours, just over two hours on Sunday. Um, and I still feel like, again, we have many a satin stitch to continue, but maybe we'll get to move on today. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll find out. We've reached the top part of the shirt, the top of the top here. Um, and then obviously we'll move into the shoulders. I think after this, yeah, after this, we're moving on to the bane of my existence, the French knots, but we get to use the orange, um, fabric, orange fabric, orange floss thread. That's the word. So that'll be nice. So it'll be our first instance of adding color to this, which will be cool. And then, yeah, hopefully. We also do need to French knot all filling in different sections. Where are we French knotting? We are French knotting the center of this flower and the insides of these little spiders too. So we will still be doing more black work, but we'll get to add some orange color. But yeah. So yes, I decided that Shadow and I needed to go on a forest adventure today. So we did just that. And we actually ran into a couple other greyhounds. As you guys know, Shadow's like a lurcher, so he's a greyhound mix. And we ran into a couple other greyhounds. And I think they were a little bit older, but one of them was a bit cheeky and came over and they actually had a run around together. And Shadow won. And I don't know if it's because this greyhound was a little bit older or if they were just kind of playing with each other and they knew like, okay, we got to keep our distance because the dogs were running and Shadow was in front and being chased by this other greyhound. And the greyhound easily could have kicked into second gear and caught up with him. But I think that was almost part of how they were playing with each other was kind of keeping that distance. It was really nice. And then the other time they came back around because it's a bit of a loop, like the forest area we were walking in. And so we came across them again, and then again, they had another little run around, but I think maybe the older of the two that had a bit more kind of gray on their face, he came over and I gave him some pets and stuff and he was so nice and smooth. Um, I never know with like, cause I'm, I like that Shadow's really fluffy. Like I like that he has longer hair and I, Liam and I always talk like, oh, if we were to, you know, adopt another Greyhound or something to then like how I would feel with them having like their kind of short sil silky hair, but it was still very nice and soft. So I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, and it was actually really nice too. Cause usually large dogs that chase after him and stuff like shadow's not really interested. He has more interest in like little dogs. He'd rather play and be chased and run around with a little dog than one that's one, like the same size as him and two, actually would be able to catch up with him. But yeah, it was really cute to see them play. <laughs> but it was freezing. It's meant to rain possibly later today, which I think would be nice because the gray sheen that it sort of put on the forest was a bit lackluster, but I do find that after it rains, um, the like moss and stuff on the trees look really vibrant. So even if it's overcast, the like fresh rain really helps make the like, the, the foliage pop, if you will. Um, so I quite enjoy that. But yeah, today they, it wasn't, it wasn't looking as, as nice as it has in the past, but that's all right. I'm like, I still love the forest, even if it's like a gloomy forest. Oh, speaking of gloomy forests, what a segue. Liam and I watched um, Pan's Labyrinth last night. Have you guys ever seen it? It came out in 2006, and I feel like it's the movie that really put like Guillermo del Toro on the map. And this came out like before Shape of Water and stuff, and I feel like he was quite like, I don't know, he wasn't as well known until after this film came out. And I've never seen the whole thing. 
One of your favorite actors in it. Oh, who's your favorite actor? Um, is he the one who, what's his name? The one who is like really, the one who they always dress up in all the effects makeup? Yeah, Doug Jones. Apparently, he was the only English speaking actor. Yeah. He was the only English speaking actor on the film. Um, and he actually learned, cause the whole thing is in Spanish, right? And so he actually learned Spanish um, for the role. But I guess in the end, oh, that was weird. They ended up um, getting like an actual Spanish voice actor to dub over his parts, but it actually really worked out because him speaking Spanish then was able to make it so that the guy who dubbed over his voice could see like how his mouth moved. And then also it was easier for the little girl who was like acting opposite him for them to like understand each other and get the beats and stuff right. But yeah, he played both of the, like, tall, lanky characters. He played the fawn and the, like, scary eye. You know, the... I feel like there is... See, I thought that this one was more... Like, I thought this character was in it more. Because I feel like, you know, there's the... I kept, kept seeing all the posters of the guy with the eyes in his hands. And he would do this in order to see what he was doing. Um, and... Yeah, I thought, I thought he was a bigger character, but he's not really, which is interesting. Okay, what am I doing? I keep trying to satin stitch over the hoop. Listen. He's on Star Trek Discovery. Oh, that's really cool. Does he play like a super like FX makeup character on that as well? It was one of those, like, Pan's Labyrinth was one of those movies that I feel like I had seen bits and pieces of, but because it is, it takes place sort of in, what is it called? It was called Fallingist Spain. So I think it's sort of like a, a totalitarian, like, fascist regime. Fallingist. Fallingism. It's a type of, like, it's like similar to fascism. So there was like a big phalangus movement in Spain in like the 40s, 30s, 40s. Yeah, he's like a sort of fish creature. Oh, cool. So they made him like even taller than he already is. Yeah, so it, it's, so it takes place during this time. So it, the whole thing is sort of coded really kind of dark. Um, but, and so because of that, because it's sort of like war totalitarian regime stuff um there are moments that are like a little bit sort of graphic or a bit violent that like i was kind of like Bleh. but there wasn't as enough i think that was the reason i hadn't watched it all the way through before because i thought there was a lot more like violence in it um than there actually was so there was only a couple moments where i sort of like covered my eye to cover the screen of the like gross stuff but like i could still kind of see what was going on at the other eye he has to walk on the balls of his feet. Ooh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you do that too. Yeah, there was one moment where I was like, this is gross, but I could like cover the gross part and still see what was going on on the screen that wasn't gross. Yeah. Um, yeah, apparently, because of course, you know, you got to IMDb all the films after you watch them. Apparently, Doug Jones, the one of the costumes he wears is or the characters he is is called a fawn. He's a fawn, that's like the main character. And I guess it was one of the more comfortable costumes because the um, the legs of the fawn were actually like attached to his hips. So they weren't like something he had to move with his arms or something. Apparently like just the way it was configured was a lot more comfortable than some of the other like crazy costumes he's worn in the past. Also that Star Trek series is really good. Yeah, that was one of the ones that I never, well, if my if it was on like because my dad watched a lot of like space related um fantasy shows sci-fi shows but i feel like he was less star trek we watched a lot of stargate actually we did a lot of stargate not a lot of star trek but actually i have a friend one of my childhood friends is super into both of them actually this new started in yeah, isn't it? Yeah, the Discovery one, right? I think I remember when that came out because I remember, didn't it? 
how long had it been out for? Because I remember, I think it um, wasn't on for very long, was it? Oh, four seasons. That's not bad. I don't know if compared to the other one. Oh, it's still on. Oh, interesting. There was another one. Maybe it did get canceled and then it got picked up by another, um, whatchamacallit? Another distribu distributor? Distributioner? Distributor. Because there was another one that wasn't on for very long. Unless it was a Stargate. It might have been a Stargate that, um, yeah, I think that, mm, maybe. There was one I just remember him being really disappointed about when it got canceled slash ended. So maybe it was this one. Nope. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it did and didn't. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm misremembering things. <laughs> That's really cool, though. Oh, I didn't even know about Strange New World. I knew about Picard. I knew Star Trek Picard. I remember I actually wrote a, um, I wrote an essay for a women's studies class and I had a whole pair, like I had a part of it. I think it was about, what was it about? It was about like powerful female characters in sci-fi shows. Cause it was a, it was like a women's studies film class. I think it was like, I don't know, I can't remember what it was. Probably like women in film probably. It was probably something simple like that. Um, and I was writing this essay and I remember this cause I think I wrote it like on the day it was due. And there is the one Star Trek, is it Discovery? Voyager, yeah. Where um, Catherine is like the leader of the ship. And so she was an example. And I remember like, but I had never watched the show, but I was like, I know this is an important insight. So basically I wanted to watch and walk, write an essay that allowed me to talk about Orphan Black but I needed other examples <laughs> of like badass heroines in sci-fi um, shows. And so I ended up pulling that one out of my butt and just like taking um, quotes or things from like a wiki article. Obviously I cited the proper articles, but just to like refresh myself on how, like what the actual plot of the show was. <laughs> But yeah, so Star Trek, Star Trek, um, helped me in my undergrad. I can't remember what the third one was. I think it might have been, um, Eliza Dushku and Josh Wheaton's Dollhouse series, possibly. Again, another one I never watched. <laughs> I remember getting a decent grade on that essay though. So obviously I was able to bullshit my way to making decent points. Can I grow up with Star Trek at all? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that true, right? It's one of those things that when somebody suggests it to you, depending on the age or depending on who suggests it, you're like, no, that's lame or that's silly. I'm not gonna do that. So yeah, you were probably like, whatever, mom, like I'm too cool for this. And now you're like, oh my God, I've been missing out. I've, I've heard lots of about but never uh, got into <laughs> oh boy he's pretty let me let me google him can't I'm sure I trust your judgment but I need to I need to let's confirm. Oh yeah, 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 mm-hmm. 
Oh, there was a Highlander series. I forgot about that. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. With the with the sword. With the sword and the long hair, definitely. So I'm not, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, mm-hmm, yep. Something about a sword. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because wasn't there original, wasn't there a Highlander movie? Was that with, who was that with? was in it oh no one I thought maybe there was like a uh, it was like a Schwarzenegger or something like that but it looks like it wasn't Christopher Lambert I don't know who that is interesting you know sometimes it's like you think that you're like oh this person reminds me like it must be like it's such a big name there must be some random big name actor in there but it wasn't it was um, I'm sure maybe he was big at the time he's not as handsome no I it didn't look like it it didn't look like it. Speaking of other handsome actors, I was just thinking Stargate was actually my first introduction to Jason Momoa. Because he was in Stargate, I think Stargate Atlantis or Stargate SGU. That was my first introduction to him. Was he really? Jason Momoa was on Baywatch? Interesting. Oh, he was a baby. Look at that baby boy. Oh my goodness. He was a child. Wow, no, this is, this, wow. Damn. He looks so young. <laughs> I was more to Stargate than Star Trek, but I can't remember much of it. Yeah. Stargate. Yeah, he was in Stargate Atlantis. Yeah, this is my, this is, yeah, he was in Stargate Atlantis, Ronan. See, this is how I remember him. Not not baby faced Momoa. He was a bit less baby faced. Yeah. So this is Ronan. Yeah, Jason Momoa. Wow. <laughs> That's so interesting. To be fair though, I feel like a lot of actors Never finished Stargate? No. It was one of those things that, like, it was always on the sci-fi channel, so I never watched it, like, from start to finish. But again, it was one of those shows that was just always on. You started from the MacGyver guy? Yeah, absolutely. Shows where that's the same person. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah, Jason Momoa with short hair is confusing to me. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. There's like certain, yeah. Like, no. <laughs> I feel like there are certain like characteristics of certain like actors and actresses, even just of people. Like people in general, like, you know when you always associate somebody with something and then it changes and then you're like, I, this, does, this doesn't compute in my brain. You know, it doesn't compute in my brain. I think the biggest example of that is when people that you know that are like well known for having beards or mustaches shave them off or people who never have that suddenly have these beards and mustaches and you're like, this doesn't make sense in my brain. 
I'm like that's not that's not what you look like in my brain to me. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. Does he ever go baby face or are you like absolutely not not allowed? <laughs> yeah, definitely. He does. Yeah, that's fair. I know Liam's not ever shaved his beard off completely since I've known him, but he does like, obviously if it gets a bit too long, then he'll shave a lot of it off. My dad has this massive like beard, like big old curly beard thing. He gets a lot of like nods from, from people when they go hiking and stuff. They're like, cool beard, man. But I asked him, I was like, isn't it like itchy? Like, how do you feel about it? He's like, oh yeah, it, it's one of those where I guess you just get used to it. He's like, it's forever itchy. It's like a giant Brillo pad on my face. But it's like, I don't know. It, it like weirdly suit him, suits him and he like, he's embraced it. Yeah. Let me see if I can find a photo of my dad's, my dad's incredible beard. kind of see it there's them my parents skiing but this is this is the beard <laughs> my dad's a pretty cool dude it actually blends into his shirt but you can see it in all of it I'm like it's basically long enough that we could probably braid it and like stick some beads in it like Viking style you know what I mean because originally yeah right originally he started growing it well, first of all, he was meant to be going on a cruise, like a Vi like a Norwegian cruise. Um, haha, I'm gonna <laughs> Yes! <laughs> hello! Hello, Jess! How you doing? <laughs> yeah. No, it's quite, it's quite a thing. But yeah, originally it started because um, when he retired from work, they were gonna go on this, like, Norwegian Icelandic cruise. But of course that's when then like COVID happened. And then, so we started growing it up for that. And then it became the, I'm gonna continue growing this beard until I get to visit my kids again. Cause obviously we're all in different places. So everyone was locked down and we weren't able to see each other. And so it became the, like, I'm not grow like I'm not shaving until I see my kids beard. And then he's seen us both. Like he's seen both me and my brother. So we're like, okay, does that mean the beard, the beard's gonna go bye-bye now? And it's like, no, I think now he's just embraced it. It's like who he is now. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's fine. Rugged adventurer man feels like, feels, it feels right, you know? He played Mr. Corporate for so long. He's ready to, you know, do full full mountain man. <laughs> All right. Back a little bit because I feel like. Keep moving this a bit back. There we go. So you guys can see what the hell is going on over here. There we go. Yeah, and also, can you guys freaking believe it's March tomorrow? Like, the audacity of the time to just go by so quickly. I'm like, time is an illusion and nothing is real. We're all in a simulation. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Did you guys ever play that, or not play that thing, but do the thing in kindergarten? So there, there's this saying where March either comes in like a lion or a lamb, and it's this saying where it's like, the, it's about the weather. So usually March, I guess, 
I don't know why, but it can be quite like blustery and stormy and windy. And so that's called coming in like a lion. And then coming in like a lamb is when the weather's like nice and calm and sunny and peaceful and stuff. And so I remember in like primary school, this was probably so like senior kindergarten or something. And in March, every day we would like have, you know, you have circle time when you're like six right everyone has circle time and they talk about the day and you know we learn the days of the week and all this kind of stuff and so during our circle time one of the things we would do in march is every day a kid would get nominated to stick either a lion or a lamb on the calendar to indicate what the weather was sort of like out in march he's one on the fourth that's wild are you planning a little party for him? A little cake smash? But yeah, the audacity. How dare he start, you know, how dare he grow up so fast? turn two last like this most recent month again i don't understand the audacity right exactly <laughs> how rude <laughs> that's gonna be really fun though i remember we did that with our with our nephew when he turned one he's gonna be turning six this year and i remember when we did like a party and they made him a cake and stuff and they even too, they like took his clothes off just to make sure he didn't get it like covered in cake. And we stuck him, there's like an island, like, you know, those like kitchen islands. And we kind of stuck him on the island beside the cake. I'm like, okay, like do the thing. But he was so unsure. He's like, I don't, what do you mean I have to get messy? Like, this is very bizarre. And so it's like, we needed to help him understand, like you can, you can stick your hands in the cake and stuff. I think he got a handle of it later. I can't remember what the theme of the cake was, but I remember it being blue and I just remember him being covered in like blue frosting dye for like days. <laughs> it's coming in like a lion, yeah. I feel like it kind of is here too. It's like, it's more just cold. Actually, it's not been too bad in terms of, it's been cold, but thankfully it's not been cold and windy because the last couple weeks it was like both. And I was like, mm-mm-mm. Don't do that. I'm like, be cold, but don't be windy because the wind just goes straight through you and you're like, this is not okay. Okay, I think we need to swap. Need to tie this off. that was about but that's fine we're nodding it anyway so it doesn't really matter shadow is currently asleep on the sofa downstairs we uh like i said we went for a grand adventure today and he's, to be fair, like I've been up here, like I had to have a shower today and I was getting ready, doing whatever. And usually what happens is like, if we're apart for so long, like this is, you know, when Liam's home as well, it's the same thing. Like he wants to be where one of us is and eventually he'll end up upstairs. But he's just been content by himself. I think it's probably like, you know, it happens with any creature, I assume, of, of, the, of the animal or human variety that they eventually you know, get a little bit more independent and they're like, okay, no, I can be down here by myself. He won't go downstairs by himself, usually. He needs someone to go down with him. 
but he'll stay down there by himself. Yeah. So, that's good. Yeah, we worked out. It was really funny yesterday because, uh, like I said, we were watching a movie and then we were getting up to get ready for bed and Liam looked at the sofa and you know the corner, I was talking about this and he goes, I'm pretty sure the corner of the sofa is sunken in and I'm like, yeah, dude, it was, it is because when I was doing, you know, cozy, cozy couch stream on Friday, I felt like I was sitting like this the whole time because I was sitting a bit further along and not in the corner and I could like feel myself. It was almost like, that sofa has its own gravitational pull, man. And so we're seeing, we're like, oh, we'll have to see if there's a way we can either get like reinforcement on that particular section. Because we've had it now, I don't know, we got it in 2020. So we've had it for about three years now, but that is obviously like, that's the most used part of the sofa. So it's not, you know, like the whole thing's not degrading equally. Oh, you can get plastic pieces. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, to sort of like reinforce it. Cause ours, it's not like um, separate cushions that you could then like peel off. It's sort of like all encased in one. Like you can't really pull the cushions out underneath, but there must be a way to get in there to kind of do stuff like that. Yeah, if that, if not, I was like, oh, we'll just like start putting a bunch of pillows underneath it just to kind of like prop myself up. I've been thinking about this cause I'm like, oh, if we're gonna do cozy couch Friday, I gotta try to make the couch more cozy for myself so I'm not just like on an angle the whole time. I think I just need to sit on a different part of it. Yeah. That, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I need to sit on a different part of it, but I need to arrange things in a way that we can still see Shadow if he decides he wants to hang out on either side of the sofa. So it's a work in progress, you guys. It's a work in progress, but we'll make we'll make it work. <laughs> We also have like the thinnest pillows. We need to look at it getting like better throw pillows. Cause I need like, we have a couple and it's like, there's one pillow that's really good. But if Liam's using that pillow for like support to support himself, like as a throw pillow, then I need like two of some of the other pillows because they're so much thinner. And so I was explaining this to him and he was like, we should just get new throw pillows. I'm like, yeah, that's also an option. <laughs> that is also an option. Ooh, yeah. I know the problem with feather, at least like, you know, the, sometimes they poke out and I think too, my parents have like feather pillow allergies. So we would need to not get the feather ones. But the only problem, the good thing with the feather ones is you can just kind of like smoosh them and mold them to what you want, right? Whereas the ones that are the synthetic, I find there are, you know, they're more firm in their shape. Um, but yeah, you can. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it's like just get the pillow forms and then we can find like cool cover somewhere else. I think what happens sometimes is you like, you kind of start working, not necessarily like decorating, but kind of, it's like you start organizing a room and then you get sort of your main things, right? So when we moved into the house, we didn't have, cause we came from an apartment. We didn't have a dining room table. We didn't really have like a decent sofa. So then like those two things became the priority. And once we got those, it was kind of like, okay, whatever. So like little finishing pieces, like there's still not a lot of, um, like we have a lot of knickknacks, but are kind of just like shoved in corners where it's like we have this whole wall that we could be putting like display shelves on and stuff like that. And you just like, I don't know, like those little like aesthetic finishing touches just kind of fall to the wayside when you're like, we have the functional items now. We'll get to that when we get to that. And then you just don't get to it. <laughs> I was thinking, Kat, for your move, because a lot of your stuff was already in boxes, 
are you, like, you're probably pretty good to go in terms of, like, your move on in April. So I was thinking, like, you'd be, I guess there's obviously still stuff you're gearing up for, and there's still things you do need to pack and stuff, but I think a lot of your stuff you had mentioned was already kind of in boxes. Oh, that's true! Yeah, that's right, you did say you were gonna do, like, a big clear out. That's fair. I guess that's a good way to think about it, right? You're like, if, okay, if this has been in storage for however many years, and we've not felt the desire to go through and take any of it... A lot of tchotchkes, yeah. But sometimes, because I think about that too, because sometimes tchotchkes are really nice, but you don't always have a place to display them. But then I guess sometimes you go through and you're like, do we need this? Or like, what does it represent? Or if it has like a story associated with it or not. Oh, really? That's gonna, that's annoying. What are you, what are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to... <laughs> I guess too, because is it, it's a rental, so you're not gonna be able to like put up shelves. Yeah, oh, you don't want anything up. Well, that's fair too. If that doesn't fit like your, the aesthetic goals, then yeah, there's kind of no point. Yeah, I know, what you, yeah, because, yeah, sometimes landlords can be really weird about hanging stuff up, eh? That's true. You're like, ideally, but I also, yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to be putting in, like, um, like, massive screws and stuff for shelving units and things. It would be like just little, almost like command strip type things. That's the one annoying thing. And I, I have, you know, complained ad nauseum to you guys about this, but it's still a pet peeve of mine. I get, you know, it's good. British homes are built with bricks and they're tough as balls, but like they're such a pain in the ass to put things up in. You have to make sure you put wall screws into everything because you can't just like, when there's timber frame houses, you just make sure you find a stud, there's no wire going through it and you can just hammer nails in left, right and center. So much easier. Now it's like, if I don't wanna try to put things up with command strip, cause sometimes depending on where it is, or the texture of the wall and stuff, I find command strips don't work. So then I have to get Liam to literally drill a hole through bricks, stick a wall plug in, screw something in, and then hang something. And it just becomes such a big faff just to like put up a piece of art. I'm like, this is ridiculous. I think that's another reason why. That's true, that is true. It would last in a tornado. But, you know. It's that, it's that fine balance, right? I'm like, yeah, I appreciate that the house is tornado proof, but also I would like to be able to hang up what I want when I want. <laughs> There actually is, because obviously some of the houses here are so old. Um, I don't know if they are anymore, because some of them end up getting um, knocked down or remodeled and stuff. But the externals, there were certain houses around here that the houses would be like made of one kind of brick. And then you would see sort of like a, like a V and then there would be different colored bricks like doing the rest of the house. Um, yeah, oh, absolutely. I don't even know if there's ever been a tornado here, like, officially in terms of, like, the, an actual tornado classification. Yeah, yours are, yours are absolutely more insane. Everything is much, much, mi much more mild here, for sure. Which is good for some things, but is, like, a pain in the ass for others. Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah, that's, that's some, like, Wizard of Oz Dorothy shit right there. 
and it's real and I know it's real and that's what's terrifying <laughs> it's like like I said that stuff is like yeah Wizard of Oz movie style in my brain because I've never had to experience that but I know for a fact that it exists in real life and that's wild No. Wow. So they're like ninja tornadoes. That's wild. Have there been like an increase? I don't know if you know this, but do you know if there's been an increase in tornadoes and stuff? Uh, with like rising temperatures and global warming and things? Because obviously they're, you know data is backing up the fact that there is a lot more chaotic weather patterns and more extreme weathers that are happening yeah yeah i believe it hurricanes yeah i remember that was always a thing like where um where we grew up in canada we were it was this thing called like the canadian crust and the way it was always described to us is that it was like such old rock or something that it made it so that like where we lived was earthquake proof or something. I forget why, but it was like this thing that they kept on saying Canadian shield. Oops, not Canadian sheepdog. Excuse me. Canadian shield. I don't want news. Yeah, it's this geological shield, a large area of exposed pre-Cambrian igneous and high-grade metamorphic rocks. And it was told, yeah, so even though it's like really, apparently really rich in minerals, but we were told that it helped make things earthquake proof. We get tornadoes and the hurricanes and the tornadoes from the west. Jeez. Oh, funny enough, the largest and best well-known Canadian shield component is actually in my hometown of Sudbury. So maybe that's why they kept touting how great it was, because one of the biggest ones was there. The only reason I say this. You think you have earthquakes? Yeah. Just just throw another, you know, natural disaster on top of the other two that you acquire usually. Just throw in, you know, just the natural disaster trifecta, you know? The thing that was always wild though, sometimes the thing though, is there actually were earthquakes in Canada, like are in Canada and in that area as well. The part that was always hilarious though, cause of course guys, I don't know if I've told you this, but like Sudbury's well known, it's a, like it's a mining town. That's its thing. It's like a nickel mining town. It's a mining town, right? Um, and so the funniest thing that I feel like only happens in mining towns is sometimes you would like feel a rumble. So you would like feel a rumble. Sometimes the house would shake a little bit and you would just be like, oh, it's just a mining blast. Cause obviously the mining town, they would, you know, go down real far down and then under the town, they're mining and excavating ore and minerals and stuff. Right. So they're doing explosions, you know, like however many feet down below you. Right. And so every once in a while there'd be like a little rumble and we'd be like, oh, it's probably a mining blast. And we'd just be like, whatever. Oh, okay. It's just them doing the mining blasts. And then we'd find out on the news that there was an actual earthquake that happened. And we're like, oh, well shit, I guess so then. <laughs> like, it was just like, we would just dismiss it. Like, oh yeah, that's just like mining rumblings. And it's like, no bitch, that was an actual ass earthquake that had rumbled its way up to where you live. But it's like only in a mining town would you full on dismiss a hurt, like one as just like, oh yeah, whatever, no big deal. Like we should just be like, oh, okay, cool. Go about your business. I'll be my sense that. We live in my house with a supervisor. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah, so silly. You're like, oh yeah, whatever. 
And then you're like, um, actually guys, we should be concerned. Oh, whoops. It was always interesting too, because, um, cause again, my dad worked for the company. Um, and so sometimes we'd be sitting down having dinner and he would like hear something or whatever. And then like, there'd be like a little baby rumble and he'd check and be like, okay, cool. The blast went off at the right time. <laughs> so I'd go to the house. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's always really cool to see sort of what the original infrastructure of a place is before it's been built up and like renovated. We have the same thing um, with this place because there is an extension built on it. Actually, this part here, like right beside me here, this is like where the old house ends. So like this wall right here, that's the end of the old house. And then everything back there is an extension. Yeah, it's interesting. We're, we're almost done, guys. We've almost sat and stitched our way to glory. The back porch and the front porch were turned into rooms. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it was it, it's like one of those sort of enclosed porches, isn't it? Those always look really nice, like the sort of enclosed wraparound porches that are covered. That's a really nice thing about, like, North American houses. Okay, let's do like here. We'll do like a half and half. I'm just trying to keep the sort of thickness of each level of the satin stitch sort of similar. It was our game room. Oh, cool. Another thing that I find really interesting about houses here, and I don't think it's universally the case, but it seems to be um, with a lot of houses around here, is they don't have basements. So I'm so used to houses being two floors, but the first floor is sort of like your main like level, and then one of the floors is actually in the basement. So the way that my childhood home was arranged is you would come into the front and there would be like a little almost like a like a little balcony, not like a balcony, but like a little platform, right? And then there would be stairs going up and stairs going down. And so your entryway was that little step and then down to your first level was your basement. And then up top was then the other one. Oh, Melon Tomato, thank you so much for the follow. I'm so glad to have you here. We have that here, I've never lived in a house with a basement though. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and but that's not really a thing here is that you, you walk in and then you're, that's your main floor and then you have your staircase to go up to your, your next one. And then a lot of times what happens is if you want, so a lot of the places here still have lofts or still have attics and they'll do something called a loft conversion and they'll basically convert the attic into another room in your house, which is interesting. Um, Whereas I feel like it was almost like, not the opposite, but what they would end up doing in Canada a lot of times, or at least where I was, is a lot of the basements were unfinished. And so they would have like your rec room and I actually live in a basement because we have that kind of two-star. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, like I said, it's not common um, in the UK I find, but I do find that they do exist. It just kind of depends where you are. That's really cool though. Um, but yeah, there was always like, at least with ours, a lot of the houses in our area, they would be like partially unfinished basements. So you'd have like your laundry room down there and then like you'd maybe have like a spare bathroom or whatever. But a lot of times it was unfinished and then it was always this big thing. I feel like, I don't know if this was, this was like a big thing for Canadian girlies. This never happened to me, but it was absolutely a thing that happened to a lot of my friends is there seemed to be this like rite of passage where if you were, you know, if you were one of multiple siblings, you know, usually you would end up sharing a room maybe. And it was like this big sort of thing that the oldest sibling got to move into the basement and have their own like basement house or basement room. Sorry, you're sorry. That's really cool. Yeah. But yeah, so it was like always a thing. I remember some of my like closest friends, it was like, ooh, they get to move into the basement. And that was like, you know, like a big prestigious thing. 
where they would go from their upstairs room. Sometimes too, they would have like shared rooms. So obviously you would have like, there could be usually like, you know, these houses were like three bedroom houses. Um, and so it would be the parents' house and then two kid houses or kid houses, rooms, sorry. And so usually two of the siblings would end up sharing a room. And then it was like, they would graduate to the basement and then the parents would like refurb part of the basement to then be a new bedroom. And it was like, it wasn't very fancy. I never did that because I had grandparents and family that lived far away. So we had like a spare room in our basement. Um, and that was the spare room for when family came to visit. So no one actually ever moved down in there. But I also only have a brother, so we never had that issue of ever having to share a room. There was only two of us, so that was never, like, a big problem. But, yeah. Just remember there was, like, certain friends of mine that it was like, ooh, your big sister gets to go in the basement. How cool and mature. I don't know what it is. I guess it's maybe because, like, we've been socialized in, like, TV shows and things. Because obviously if your bedroom is like beside your parents' room, when you get to be a bit older and there's like that stereotype of like sneaking out of your room and like going to hang out with your friends and stuff, it didn't really happen. But like that was the stereotype in TV, right? And it's like, so obviously if you had a room in the basement, then your ability to like sneak out of the house and get up to shenanigans with all of your friends and cute boys and stuff was obviously elevated because your bedroom wasn't right next door to your parents' room. That's me like totally reading into it. Feels like an episode of like a 2000s teen show. <laughs> that was not something that I had experience with though. I'm like, girl, seven boys have always had my, oh wow, of seven, that's incredible. Are you oldest, youngest, or somewhere in the middle? oldest oh that's interesting that's really cool though do you find that with that many siblings because you're the oldest you had to sort of take on like pseudo parental responsibilities you were like the go-to babysitter and stuff like that did i ever sneak out not that i can remember you know what it was usually what would happen is i would message my parents and be like yo no i said cameras at the door yeah um yeah i don't think so i usually let my parents know what was up. Or I would message them and be like, yo, I've gone out. But that was when I was like in my 20s, you know what I mean? So I feel like it was one of those where I was allowed to leave the house at like dumb like hours of the night. Only to my friend's house to make out. That's awesome, yeah, no. No, I never, I, there were a bunch of girls that I like, that I was kind of friends with, but you know, not super, super close. And they would always have sleepovers um, and one of their friends, like, so one of the girls, her home was in a basement, or her room was in a basement, and they had, like, they would sneak out and then go and, like, drink in the park nearby. This was, like, in high school, so everyone was up to, you know, their, their illegal drinking shenanigans, but I never partook. Yeah. Like as much as I feel like I wanted to rebel against my fit parents, I feel like I was way too much of a goody two shoes to be like, I don't wanna, I'm not gonna do that. I think they were just mostly concerned about how boy crazy I was. But like the drinking and stuff was not, was not something they were concerned with and I wasn't interested in. Like I said, I was too busy. I was too busy on MSN messaging cute boys that went to, you know, the, com the neighboring elementary schools. That was a huge thing. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like, I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking about this because I was going through different, um, like, nostalgic songs and stuff, like, from, from my childhood and sort of creating a bit of, like, a, a list of things. 
and I was just thinking, there was one song I found, it was, this was a Canadian girly named Sky Sweetnam, and I was listening to the song and I was like, I absolutely use these song lyrics in my MSN, like, screen name, or my, like, MSN, you know, you could fill out all these different things. And then there was like literally websites dedicated to where you could go and like download different display pictures because no one actually used their face. I don't know when there was a switch. Like, I guess maybe when social media happened, like when Facebook and things happened, maybe even like MySpace, where people would actually use pictures of themselves as their display picture. Because when we were using Instant Messenger and like, MS like MSN, we didn't actually use our own photos. We would just like download like cringy song lyrics off of different websites and that would like there those would be the icons. Yeah. So there wouldn't actually be. And then of course too what would happen is you would then get like really close and like get really flirty on MSN with different boys you liked and then you'd go to school and the two of you would pretend you didn't know each other. You would like not even exchange words or like exchange a few words. There were a few people that like I remember having like I felt like they were like really close MSN friends but like non-existent IRL friends. It was very bizarre. I'm sure that happens now. Like I remember talking to somebody I, when I used to work at um, Pandora and they were talking about how they knew this person because they were Snapchat friends, but they've never actually like spoken or talked in real life. And I'm like, at first I was like, that's so silly. But then I thought, no, that we had the, our equivalent of that. You know, when you would just add your friends, friends, hotmail account to your MSN and start talking with someone you've never actually met before. Hi Kay, good morning, how are you? We were just talking about instant messenger. I don't know if you had MSN or AOL or ICQ, which was one that was a bit too old for me. I never had ICQ, but it gets referenced in one of, in, in my favorite Prozac song. Go to AOL chat rooms and then we'd have we had Excite Yahoo chats for a while. Oh, interesting. I don't know if I've heard of that one. But yeah, AOL chats. I never did like Habbo Hotel and stuff, but I had friends who were really into those sorts of spaces. I think the only one I did was like Neopets, but I don't remember you interacting with people like you did in places like Habbo Hotel. Running slow. Oh no. As in like you're 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 just physically get up and at him and we're talking to a boy for three years. Then one random grade nine, he's like, I seen you today. <laughs> no. That's so funny. You're like, oh shit, we go to the same school. I was around for AOL, wasn't super social, and then that's fair. We had little avatars that you could click next to another avatar. Little buses you could get on that's cute! Everyone ride the little avatar bus together. That's so funny. I remember um, my brother and some of my friends. You spend more time on Lord of the Rings fan boards. Hey man, that is also equally as awesome. I remember my brother and some of my, like it was more my friends, some of my brothers. Um, yeah, my brother and some of my friends got really into like RuneScape. Um, and I remember playing that with them for a little bit, but I just remember there would be like social areas and there would be a lot of things where people would go like, click one, two, three, four, if you want a girlfriend, click one, two, three, four, if you want a boyfriend. And then you would just like say those things. You'd be like, oh, one, two, three, four. And then you'd just be like dating somebody in RuneScape. I feel like that happened in a lot of different games too. There would be like, I want, I want a boyfriend. Say, say hi if you want a girlfriend. And you would say that and then you'd just be dating for like all of two seconds. <laughs> so I'd have a hotel for two nights, it was creepy. I was on, you know what it was when I was in grade nine, I think. My friend convinced me to join Second Life. Um, and that was really interesting. Cause there were people that had full on, like you could have a full on job in Second Life and like you got paid and all this and you could upgrade your house and stuff. And then I remember I was being really into probes. Cause again, guys, this is how people explore sexuality and their understanding of the world. It's actually good that like things didn't go bad. Then get angry here. Yeah. 
It's true. It's true. You'd be cute, like, texting with the best, like, texting with this bestie, and then you would see them, and you'd be like, listen. But, yeah. So, Second Life was wild, because there were 18-plus sections, and they were basically, like, like, SEX dungeons and stuff like that, and I'm, like, little 14-year-old me, which shouldn't have been in there. Because all you have to do is just click I'm 18, right? You don't actually have to, you just, like, make shit up all the time. So, that was interesting. And I remember it was, like, years later, I decided, I went to go back in just to see, like, as an adult, as an actual legal consenting adult, just to see, like, what the hell I had gotten myself into all those years ago. And it was janky as hell. Like, it's so pixelated and so, and I thought that was, like, peak, like, you know, graphics or whatever at the time. And then I'm, like, it's, I'm surprised that, you know, People on the internet were actually, like, getting off to this sort of content considering how janky and pixelated it is. But if that's your only option, I don't know, man. I guess so. <laughs> Power to you. But yeah, that was, that was more of the seedier stuff. Oh my god, are you kidding me? I had multiple Pixo websites. I completely forgot about that until you triggered a core memory. <laughs> yeah, that was like pre-MySpace or it was like MySpace for like high school. No, like we did them in elementary school. And so Pixo was like a make your own website forum and you could have like passwords and stuff. And people would like post collages of their friends or they would have like cool random artwork. We were just all like learning how to code and stuff. I don't know how to do any of that shit now. Like people used to like HTML code their MySpace pages and stuff. And it was like, I don't understand how I've retained none of that knowledge. Yeah, grade seven and eight. Wow, was enough for me. Someone once found out I was a girl and they like flocked to me. Ew. Yeah. That's always so awkward. You're like, I just wanna, I just wanna play WoW and go on raids and like get cool mounts in peace. Why you gotta, why you gotta be creepy like that, you know? But yeah, Pixo was wild. When I did my um, nostalgic show and tell, I actually found screenshots of my like Paper, what were they called? They were like paper doll, like digital paper doll websites. I forget what they were called, but I actually found them because my dad gave me a CD of just like all of the files from our old PC. Um, and some of them were me taking pictures of these kit things in Microsoft Paint. The color coding. <laughs> Hey, you aren't too bad for- Oh, yeah, that's rude. You're like, no, I'm not- I'm just a good player in general. None of this for a girl bullshit. Yeah, the doll sites. What was it called? There were, like, celebrity ones as well. But- I don't know why this is looking not as clean as the other ones. Really? That's so funny. Easy life. Oh, I've never heard of those ones. Let me see. Let me see if I still, I probably put it away somewhere, but let me look this one up though. E-L-U-I. Oh, cute. These ones are much more detailed. Yeah. These ones are much more detailed than the ones that I was used to. What was it? Like doll maker. 2000s. Yeah, dolls mania. That, that was the one. Style dolls, yeah. These ones, these are the ones that I would spend hours on. 
making all my friends, all these girlies, all the cute boys, wild. But yeah, those ones look, they look a lot nicer. Whereas those ones, like, I feel like we were in peak sort of 2000s, like Y2K, MTV style. I want to change my avatar to that now. That's so funny. That would be incredible. <laughs> I think they actually exist too. Like, I think there is still platforms where you can make them because there's been a little bit of a, a Y2K revival of sorts. Ooh. We went to make my own designs using bases. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I know, I know, right? Kay is upset. I feel like we were already, we were already fuming when 90s became retro now, but yes, unfortunately, friends, Y2K is now back in the cycle, which is rude. But you know what it is? It's always one of those things. I don't know if you guys find this where like <laughs> the, um, the Y2K trends in like the 2000s or probably even like the 90s trends too that are coming back around. I never participated in those ones. Oh, like the new updated ones? I think I have. I think I've seen like the new sort of 90s American Girl dolls. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I find like a lot of the things that are really in are like obviously like the baby doll tees and like the micro mini skirts and the ultra low rise jeans and the glitter and the sparkles. But like I wasn't doing that. Also, I was a child. So I also don't think my parents would let me be caught dead wearing that. Oh, speaking of which, you know, it was a thing. I remember this. I remember being in like the sixth grade and there were eight grade girlies walking around and it was like a cute thing. Like, you know, it sounds really bad, but obviously when you're young and you're still under a certain age, but you're like still trying to figure out like your sexuality and like you got your hormones are all acting psycho and you're learning about boys and all that kind of stuff, right? And so like you're trying to learn what sexy is and what attractive is, which I feel like it's a hellscape now. I feel like it's probably even worse than it ever was when we were younger. Um, but I remember it being like such a scandalous thing. And again, too, this is also internalized misogyny, slut shaming stuff. Um, cause there were all these girls in our elementary school that were like a few years older than us. And we thought that like, they were like the popular girls. Um, and their whole thing was that they would wear, um, white shirts with Playboy bunny logos on them and black bras underneath. So all of the boys could like see their bras and we were like, oh my God, like they're being so scandalous and like, oh, we were super slut shamey about it. But that was like their way of trying to like express themselves and stuff. I don't know. But I also remember it was also wild to me. No, I don't think it was allowed at ours either. It was like one of those things though that it was like very blatantly obvious that it was a choice instead of like an accident. Like, cause you don't, you have that thing. Like I've had that thing when I was younger, when you would wear like a colored bra and you didn't think that your shirt would be able, you'd be able to see the bra underneath. And then sometimes you would, and you'd be mortified. I think that was an actual deliberate choice on some of their parts. Um, but yeah, that was wild though. Like the nineties, two thousands, like playboy renaissance where like it was like a cool thing to be walking around in like playboy stuff when you were like 12 
interesting, interesting, interesting. You know, we had the, what was it? It was always the, the two finger shoulder strap rule. I think it was two or three. There were certain dress code things. So it was either like the three finger shoulder strap. So your like tank top or something could have had to have like a, a shoulder strap that was like a certain thickness. And then the skirt test was always, it couldn't be passed. It had to be longer than your arms at your side, but obviously some people have longer arms or shorter torsos than others. So that became like, it was like an, an inaccurate measurement, really. 1999 is historical. Hey man, 1999 was a hot minute ago. I know every once in a while I come across memes where it's like people born in like the 2000s are legally allowed to buy alcohol and I'm like, that's messed up. That's not real. Excuse me, no you're not. You are a literal child. And it's like, no, actually. <laughs> right? Nope. Absolutely not. Yeah. Time is an illusion. Nothing is real. Everyone's a baby. Like as much as I'm angry about, you know, not angry, but as much as I'm like in a state of disbelief that people younger than me are adults, I'm still a baby. Yeah, honestly, true. Um, same. But despite all of that, like I genuinely enjoy getting older. Like I like the fact that I'm getting older. I feel like, you know, I enjoy the aging process so far. So it's like this weird thing where I'm like, I also don't like that you babies are adults, but also I am quite enjoying aging. So it's this interesting juxtaposition where I'm like, technically if I enjoy aging, that means everyone around me is also getting older. But. Then it's also this true that, you know, the more you, yeah, I don't make any I just want my bones to not hurt. That, yeah, I could deal without the aches and pains of aging, but I also feel like I was aching and paining as a teenager, so it doesn't feel new to me. <laughs> yeah, I joke, I'm finally starting to feel like I'm starting. Yeah, absolutely. I think the other thing too, and I don't know if it's like, you know, you slowly realize, and I'm still realizing, and I still, I feel a bit scammed, you guys, because as I've gotten older, you know, when you're young, you think you're just going to meet, you know, hit this miraculous age where you like feel like an adult and you know what you're doing. And the older you get, the more you realize that no one knows what the hell they're doing. And we're all just winging it. We're all just trying our best with the resources and information we've been given. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. People don't expire. Yeah, there's no, there's no best by date, you know? Everyone, everyone's their best regardless of their age. Everyone, every new day is a chance to be an awesome version of yourself. I don't know how or what sort of a knot I have created, but I'm annoyed. It's okay, we're gonna fix it. We'll get it. We'll get her done. Maybe. I don't even know what I did. I might have to cut it. Usually I don't like to. Usually I would just like sit here and play with this and try to unearth it, but 
We got satin stitches to make. right now listen you son of a bitch the audacity so you know, yeah <laughs> you're like oh yeah i guess i am eh it is an interesting concept too though right because i do feel like that is a thing like a lot of people, I think myself included, you know, sort of mentally maybe feel like a different age, you know? Morning, Meg! How you doing? I hope things are well with you. But yeah, how like mentally you can sort of feel like you're one age, even though physically you're a different age. I don't know if I feel, cause like I'm turning 31. I don't know if I feel 31, but I also don't feel like my mid 20s self by any means. Cause she was living and learning. <laughs> I think cause I daydream I can remember so much about my past. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking to move this weekend. Whoa! Oh, that's frustrating. Did the move go all right, despite it? Did you have lots of hands, all hands on deck to assist in the moving? That's annoying. It's not nice when you have like important productive things to have to do when you're not feeling well. Cause you know, you're like, uh, my body is trying to tell me I need to rest, but I got time frame and limits to do things. <laughs> You're like, we don't, it's truly a thing. Like there's definitely like a thing, like I do not have time to be ill. And like, that's true in a lot of cases for a lot of people. I'm confident that I can claim the worst movement. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh my God. 30K for these meds. Oh, what just happened here? That's wild. She might not need them. When do you find out if she needs them for sure or not? Or do you guys have to make that decision? Either, that's, that's a rough decision to have to make. Started raining, didn't have much help. Spent five hours in ER. Did you injure yourself on the move or was that due to the sickness? It's on the pause for now because we're not sure. Yeah. Oh, is she gonna be readmitted? I thought everything was like going all right. It was puking blood. Gee, <laughs> very exorcist like. I'm glad, I'm glad you're seeing the humor in the circumstances, Meg, because that is wild. Oh no, cat. That's such a shame because everything was going so well after her after her surgery. That's really frustrating. Oh really? Like maybe gallstones or something? That'd be wild. No, the doctor guys let me. Oh, interesting. Oh, we we love we love a gaslight gatekeep moment from the doctor. Love that. <laughs> really? I had an ex who had gallbladder surgery. It's very interesting. Luckily, it's a keyhole surgery, like the gallstone one, so it's not huge. But that's wild that. This gallbladder was like, I'm done. I quit. 
But yeah, no, not not a fan of a of a g gaslighting doctor. What's that random tree? <laughs> it snuck its way in there. Now his insides are like a slip and slide. That's tragic, but also hilarious to visualize. <laughs> I'm like, I know medically that's not ideal and I'm sure his bowels do not appreciate it, but I appreciate the visual of the slip and slide. But, whew, excuse me. Yeah, to be fair, I have some beef with my doctor as well. It's not necessarily my doctor per se, but they have this online prescription renewal system and like this online system that you're meant to be, um, Yeah, that's the only thing with gall, like with when you remove the gallbladder, is that you can't like any fatty foods. That's where it like gets processed in junk, right? Random. Why do not? Oh, yeah, not all doctors gaslight. Only some. Yeah. But sick with human united chat. Truly, truly, truly. Um. But yeah, so I basically, cause I'm, I'm on like long-term medication and this site, you just go in and you request, you request a repeat prescription and they drop it off at your pharmacy. And like, this has been a system that's been working for years and it's only in the last time I tried to, so maybe in the last like six months, because I tried to renew, I get like three month sort of installations of this prescription and like in the last three months, the system has stopped working and it's a third party system. So like I've gone and I've asked like the prescription people at my doctor practice and it's like, it's something to do with the larger app itself, but then it just becomes such a pain in the ass because it's like all of the systems when you call, they're like, use the online system, use the online system. And I'm like, I would love to fucking use your online system. It's not allowing me to use it. And so instead I have to, I think I'm gonna, what, what I ended up doing last time in a panic is I ended up calling the pharmacy and being like, can you send over this repeat prescription form for me? Or else I have to physically drop off a form at the doctor and then physically pick up a new prescription and then physically take it to the pharmacist. And I'm like, it's so much easier if you guys can just ping information to each other. I don't know why this isn't working. And so finally I sent a note, there was a help option with the app itself, so I could be like, yo, why the fuck is this not working, even though my doctor's practitioner is encouraging me to use it. But of course, they're like, we're experiencing a high number of inquiries, so we will get back to you as soon as possible. So I think I need to sort it out sooner than later, or else I'm gonna run out of my prescription before they allow me to renew it on this stupid website. I'm under the impression that nurse practitioners are Yeah, I feel like that's kind of the, re like that's the reality that I've, been aware of too what is going on with all of these there we go it's fine but yeah i think it's the thing too is like doctors just come in and they're meant to be lurks and gets ready to adult yeah <laughs> oh no yeah that's it do your stretches k do do your adult get ready to adult stretch time honestly But yeah, I think, I don't know, it's, it's hard, right? Because doctors, especially when they're just like general practitioners, they have like a generalist knowledge on all sorts of things as opposed to a specialist thing. And then also I think probably what happens is, especially if they've been in it for a while, which I think is a sign of burnout and they need to take a fucking break. But if they just routinely see people and they go, well, I've seen these symptoms a million times, it's probably this. And I'm sure nine times out of 10 it is, but on the off chance that it's not, don't gaslight the person feeling the symptoms and be like, I promise you as the doctor, this is the situation. And it's like, no, actually, 
this symptom actually has a million different possible causes. So maybe we investigate some of those. But the best thing was when Liam was experiencing something and he very rarely goes to the doctor, right? And so he gets to the doctor and the doctor goes, okay, so um, what, what seems to be the problem? And he's like, I don't fucking know. That's why I'm here. I'm hoping you will help me identify. And then I think after they did the consult, it's like, oh, so what, what do you want me to do for you today? And it's like, figure out what's wrong and fix it. <laughs> but why else would I be here? So you, you truly do need to like be your own advocate. Like I can see both sides that I do think, you know, doctors are overworked, underpaid, and they get, you know, they see a lot of the same shit over and over again. And so I'm sure, you know, from their, in their professional opinion, you see a lot of the same shit, you start recommending the same shit. And it's like, but sometimes that's not what it is. So you gotta be like, yo, <laughs> let's try something different. Let's look up something else. This just got so chaotic in here and I don't understand why. But it's fine. We're almost done. I think it actually took a couple years for me to finally, like from the onset of me experiencing um, like symptoms and like pain symptoms to when I finally got diagnosed with celiac disease. It took a good few years because they thought it was all of these other different things. And when, you know, the different trial and erroring of it all resulted in it not being those things, you had to keep going back to the drawing board until you find out what it is. But it can be such a stressful process to get to that point, right? I think anybody who has like chronic pain or has any sort of like mysterious medical needs or knows people with like random medical needs even ones that are pretty straightforward sometimes it seems like such a pain in the ass to like get support for them we're almost finished this shoulder again i don't know why it got so wonky it's like everything was going up and down fine and then all of a sudden I don't know but it's fine i think from a distance it still looks good so we're gonna you know keep calm and carry on as it were i hate going to the doctor because even with health insurance yeah that's a whole other can of worms too all you all you us peeps have to deal with those shenanigans of just the absolute bullshit of paying for stuff like, gotta, gotta love a system that relies on everyone going into debt in order to, for it to run. Like, what? I guess this is, you could make the same argument for the education system as well. Yeah, it absolutely is. You're like, do I, it's like, I, I'm sure, I'm sure all of you, like, I'm sure all of you American peeps have such higher pain thresholds and pain tolerances than people in the UK and Canada because the option, like the alternative is paying exorbitant fees. And you're like, I'm just going to continue to be in pain and suck it up because that is more affordable. And I'm sure my sales will be used, honestly. And is that, is that from a, like the, Public, like not public school, but like the elementary high school or the post-secondary ones. Or both. Yeah, I just watched, what is it? I watched the new Phil DeFranco show and they talked about, I don't know if it was Tennessee or Kansas and how they're super, like, I don't know what's going on and why everyone, no, it was in Florida actually. I think Florida right now. They're basically like cutting all of these things because they're like, we can't have our people being taught X, Y, and Z in schools. I don't know why all of these like right wing people suddenly like got real precious about critical race theory 
And it's like, no, we're just teaching about the fact that there's mass inequality and historically there was mass inequality. So I don't understand why that's suddenly something we can't teach. Yeah. It's pretty wild because I've seen that a lot where isn't that a thing where like teachers will try to raise money for school supplies for their districts and have to like try to crowdfund for them. Absolutely surreal. Yeah, I think that's what it is. He's just like on this weird little Puritan rampage. And it's like, for what? I really don't understand. Yeah, there's a website. That's wild to me. And that's so like shameful that that's literally part of the infrastructure of the schooling system. Donors choose. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. To be fair, this actually looks real cute, like as a one shoulder situation. Obviously we're filling this in because we've outlined it, but like this is looking real cute. Do you believe from Tennessee to look very one to make a day to celebrate the founder of the KKK? Oh my gosh. Like, like, you just feel like the more, it just seems to be like the more we seem to progress as a society, the more the like fucktards double down on trying to regress again. You know, and it's just like, stop. This is, stop. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like people are upset, right? Because, you know, the economy's in the shitter. People don't have jobs, you know? The, like, there's a, like a living, what is it called? Like a living wage crisis. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are really upset and angry and disenfranchised and need a place to direct that anger. But it's like they really should be directing it. Cost of living, that's the term. Thank you, Aurora. And it's like, like instead of politicians are using like racial divides as scapegoats for them to actually be being held accountable for the bullshit that they're causing people. And like, I'll never understand why, like the thought of thinking like I'm currently disenfranchised and you know it's not the billionaires who are hoarding wealth and the one percent that refuse to pay taxes on their billions and billions of dollars no it's somebody who doesn't look like me who's to blame for the problem and it's like they're just as they're, they're on the struggle bus just like you are. If anything, you should be conspiring and being in cahoots with each other because you both share the same struggles of society is pushing you guys into really shitty circumstances. But instead, it's like, oh, the billionaires will help us. It's the, it's the others people that are, are bad. I just now got a living wage. Yeah, absolutely. It's not living wage, I guess. Mm -hmm. Just riots everywhere, truly. Yeah, I think what happens though, because I know we were having that too. Like we, there's mass, I think it's like historically the most strikes and walkouts we've had in the UK in years. But instead of actually like bringing to the table and trying to do something about it, the politicians then try to pass laws that like prohibit people from protesting you know what i mean so like instead of fixing the problem they're just trying to f stop the only real way that we can get attention for those things i don't know man 
Yeah, there's like certain certain healthcare professionals that like have never have never gone on strike and they're like this is some bullshit we need to sort it out. There's like a little lip that doesn't really make sense for me to then do a full satin stitch up because that will leave a gap. So we're just gonna close that little gap. Post JHQs in the UK, and you know they've been on a strike. Put the one in my town. They're only open from eight to ten. How are you? How are you? Ex how are you? Some what? How are you expected to pick anything up? And it's like most people are, are going to work or like have, yeah. Oh, I hate when they do that. I hate when delivery people, you can tell they've not even attempted. It's like, we've literally been home all day. I do not leave the house. What are you telling me you've missed us? Sorry, we've missed you. We're gonna try again. Or we're not gonna try again. Please go pick up elsewhere. You're like, um, no, I call your bluff, sir. I have been home all day. That's so annoying. I feel like that probably, does that happen to you often? I feel like sometimes with like, like flats and stuff, delivery drivers like don't, like, I don't know. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing, which is weird. Cause I feel like there's so many like flats and so many like apartment complexes and stuff in the area. Like how, how do, like, is just everyone in the apartment not supposed to ever receive deliveries? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Is that Monday to Friday that that is the case? Or is it one of those where they do have like a late day, but it's like one day a week or something? Not often really. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's still annoying though. You're like the one time. Also like not being funny, I am not like fully conscious at eight in the morning. You know, like Shadow is lucky if I can get my shit together for us to be going on a walk by like 9.30. So if I had to go to the post office before then, weekdays two hours open, Saturday four hours open. That. So what, like, what happens if you can't collect a parcel in those time periods? Do they just return to sender or do they just hold on to it until... Because I feel like in a way they're almost like, I get it, like that they need to, you know, they don't want to be open as often. But then I'm like, I feel like they're probably sitting on so many more packages because of that. Like there's gotta, there's gotta be a, like there's gotta be a better way. <laughs> I work most of work on the big call. That that honestly, that is the dream. That is the dream. That is the dream. Oh my god! Your sister had gallstones? Are they gonna have to remove her gallbladder too, or are they just gallstoning? Michigan outdoors, howdy howdy. Good afternoon. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. How are things? How are things? Ha oh, geez. Meg's in there. She's like, uh, excuse me, you say howdy, I come howdy. <laughs> the superior greeting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's already removed. 
She had that in a planned hysterectomy. They did, oh, really? They did both at the same time? Wow. What would be the, like, what's the recovery? She's good, yeah. I was gonna say what the recovery time on that would be like. That's so interesting. I guess it kind of makes sense. If you're already going in for a surgery, if it's like a quick surgery, they might as well, like, it sounds weird. Like they might as well bash out multiple surgeries at once if they're kind of all going in the general area. That's interesting though. Just a month recovery, oh, okay. Yeah, that seems, I don't know. I don't know. In in the grand scheme of recovery time, I don't know what that is like. Because isn't it like, a, it's about similar when somebody has a, a C-section, eh? Like it's usually about six weeks, is it not? I don't know. Don't know why I'm here. Shut up my microphone and channel list. Can't even sew a button on. <laughs> That's all right. Recommended channels. All good. All good, all good. <laughs> hey man, if you can't, we we respect everyone of all crafting levels and even non-crafters. We have a lot of gaming friends. We have a lot of you know all all sorts. It's because we love Michigan here. That's true. That's true. Mhm. Mm Tasha, like, aw, thank you, Meg. Oh, I appreciate that. All of your organ shift is gross. Wow. I had that actually, somebody told me that when they had their first child, that the child like was so big, I think cause they had them um, when they were quite young. And so all of like the pregnancy caused all their organs to shift around, which was wild. We do also love Michigan. Michigan is, I feel like it's sort of like the most Canadian, one of the more Canadian parts of the US. So, you know, I feel feel like we're very kindred spirits in that regard. <laughs> oh, we're, this is gonna be so annoying because I think we're gonna have to make, do more thread, do a new thread. Um, Just for that last little bit here. Best I can do is tie fishing on a lure. Hey man, that's already, that means you know knots. Knots are important, knots are good. Gotta shoot off. Oh, no problem. I hope the walk goes well. I hope it tires the bubba out. Thank you so much for stopping by. I always appreciate you. We're gonna do some stretchy stretching. We gotta actually, here, let's, let's do neck stretch. I didn't do that. I did some stretches before stream because I had some time. I was proactive. He'll tire me out for sure. Yeah, truly. You're like, I'll need a nap. I don't know if he'll know a nap. <laughs> yes, do no knots. It's true, knots are important, man. I feel like too, see actually, this might come in handy later because you know, if we finish this satin stitch, we do need to attempt French knots later. Though I don't know if they're, they're more like decorative knots. I don't think they're gonna be, you know, they're not gonna hold a lure in place, that's for sure. But hopefully they'll, you know, they're, they're strategic knots. My husband's job is in Michigan, keep wondering. Yeah, it is so cold. I thought you said you liked the cold, cat. It will definitely be a shift for sure. It just means you get to wear lots of comfy, cozy jumpers or sweaters all the time, you know? <sighs> yeah, we'll do a few more. I do like cold. Oh, he hates the cold? Yeah, I don't think Liam could thrive in the cold either. To be fair, I'm not a fan of the cold. The fact that like I survived, you know, 20, 20 plus years in Northern Ontario, I'm astounded. Man, I don't fish, but I've got a weird thing for fishing shows. Oh, interesting. I'll binge watch River Monsters like no one's business. That's incredible. Do you watch things like Deadliest Catch as well? You're 30 minutes from Canada. There you go. Yeah, exactly. See, Kinder Spirit. I guess you, yeah, Michigan, literally stones throw away. That's how I got to see Weird Al in concert. I went from Sault Ste. Marie, Canada to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan and watched him at the casino and he was great. Should we try? Jeremy Wade is daddy. See, he was insane on that show. <laughs> okay, we're gonna maybe try to finish this with this thread that we have left, but I do think that we're gonna have the tiniest little amount to make a knot with. But we're just gonna make it work.
They stopped the show because they caught all the- Really? There is only so many- There is a finite number of river monsters. Interesting. Who would have thought? No, there's definitely not enough. That's so annoying. There's not enough thread. <laughs> Disney Plus have to show with him and then also another series with Cyril. Oh. Okay, we need to tie this off here and start a new thread, which is annoying because it's such a small amount, but I think we will be better off for it. Lot of like because isn't it one of their channels is like the National Geographic one so they have quite a few more of the like sort of National Geographic true life adventure things actually wild because we only have so much to be fair we might actually have to go into our own floss stash for this um but the one about the last slave ship in his town oh interesting yeah There's one, there's a documentary on Netflix I keep meaning to watch all about the, I think it's called like the fantastic world of fungi. Cause you guys know I fucks with mushrooms. I'm very interested in that. So I need to watch that eventually. I've never seen a camping streamer before. Oh, Michigan Outdoors, are you a streamer? Wow. That's incredible. Outdoor camping streamer. I like that. I like that a lot. You've watched it as pretty transcendental. Ooh, am I gonna have my world rocked, K? I love that idea. Color me intrigued. Oh my goodness. I've never. An outdoor streamer. That's so cool. <laughs> we don't rough it though. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, it's a little bit more, possibly like a glamping situation. Not intensely, but you know, a little bit. I'm intrigued by this. Anything outdoors. I like that. I also need a shower in a bathroom. Yeah. I guess true. I guess, you know, you are, it, it is a bit, it's a bit chilly willies out there right now, so camping when when's when's the ultimate camping time frame i guess as soon as the snow melts unless you do unless you do like winter who knows i'm gonna say if it's northern ontario you're not doing yeah that's cool though i've never seen i like that i feel like you're bringing you're bringing you know outdoor adventuring to the masses may october that's awesome 
one of the things that I want to do with Liam, because I don't think he's ever done... To be fair, I don't even know if I've really done, like, actual camping camping. Like, I don't know if everyone probably who had, like, a yard, backyard growing up, we always had tents and we would put them up in the backyard and, like, sleep in the tent in the backyard. And then we would... I always do day trips to, um... We do day trips to national parks um, in Canada and stuff, but I've never actually, like, gotten a campsite and done... Actually... No, I lie. One time I did. I had an ex and we actually went to a proper campsite before. That was fun. I enjoyed that. But yeah. So maybe you'll have some tips, some sweet, sweet tips and tricks for us come when we actually decide to. I think next year. You have a whole backpack set up. That's so cool. I was gonna say you must require like the the like the IRL streaming fascinates me because I wonder like do you I don't know if, like what what caliber of tech you need to do that growing up all our family vacations were camping oh interesting look at that guys we finally finished the top she's officially colored in. Now it's time, dun dun dun, for the evil, the audacious French knots. So I think what we're gonna do, we had a pop-up camper a while, that's really cool. Three modems, one encoder, cameras and a huge battery. Wow. Yeah. Cause I guess then that would be, ha that's happening over the internet so you'd have to you can't like you go camping but you can't go like full full in the wilderness you know like you can't you gotta make sure there's a there's there's a tower a cell tower nearby that's so cool though okay yes so what we're gonna do is i think we are gonna attempt the black work spider body french knots first just because, again, we have the black thread queued up. And then I think once we fill this in, we do have the short and long stitches and the fishbone stitch to do with this thread. Hopefully we have enough. Again, if not, we can reach into the stash. Um we have plenty of DMC 310, obviously, for this purpose. Modems run three different carriers and encoder bonds. Oh, okay. See, that's like some crazy techie shit that like flows right over my head. So kudos to you for figuring that kind of stuff out. That's interesting. Yeah, because I always thought it would be really cute. Again, though, I feel like I don't have the, the bandwidth capacity. Because um, obviously I take my dog Shadow um, on forest hikes quite frequently. We have a lot of, like, green space sort of in our neighborhood. And I always thought it'd be really cute to go live while I'm, like, in the forest with him. I guess I could always do that on something like Instagram, right? Like, because Instagram, the interface is, like, a bit... I don't know. Like, that might be a bit easier to do like an Instagram live from the forest. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't, yeah, it wouldn't end up being like a three hour stream. Though we're usually gone for like an hour-ish. That is true, that is true. I never knew, I guess, again, I'm asking questions cause I don't know. <laughs> you can enable your camera when you're streaming on your phone, right? I assume that that can all be integrated into the same space. I'll have to try that one day. I'll have to just like poodle around with it and see what that would be like. Okay, let's remember how to French knot. A lot of IRL streamers. Yeah. But, you know, I feel like 
if if you're gonna go ham in the wilderness, you want good quality stuff. So I, I get the idea to invest. I get the desire to invest in like good quality stuff. Especially if that's like your whole channel, right? It's one thing if people are doing like an IRL stream every once in a while, then it makes sense to maybe not invest in all of the tech, but okay. So <laughs> French knots, we take the thread, we wrap it. I think they want us to do twice. Are we doing twice or three times? Let me double check. Two or three times. Well, let's do two because these are baby ones. I go over there's not very good cell service. Yeah, exactly. That's what I think. I think like because it's a camping aspect and you're in a bit more remote area, you kind of need that option. Okay. Please don't suck. Once I get on here, get off of here. Okay. There we go. I wonder how many French knots it'll take to fill this in. So we've done one. Same thing. Parallel. Yeah, that's wild though. It's so interesting that we're living in a time now where campsites need to have Wi-Fi. Like that's wild to me, but it makes sense. I feel like it's, it's now, it's just like a necessary perk of things now. But yeah, I'm sure it's not that good. The necessary evils of the world. One, two. Oh, that one was a bit too far down. I have to go back in and fill that, possibly. This is like kind of working. This is very odd. It's a very odd thing to be filling, filling with French knots. I'm not entirely sure. Gotta go, no problem, Kay. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope the rest of your day goes well. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for hanging out with us. Okay. So now I don't know how I'm gonna close this gap here, but we're gonna try. One, two, buckle my shoe. I guess because, I don't know, I guess you can kind of move the knots around. This seems, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this but we're just gonna keep going and hope for the best. That's all we can do. I've never made like so many consecutive French knots near each other. I try to make the only thing video games a lot of people watch, so many streamers. Yeah. No, it's true. It's definitely an oversaturated market. It's like you either have to obviously like play, either play games that you just want to play regardless of who's, you know, going to be coming in your streams. You play it, the games because you like the games. Um, or you have to sort of play the algorithm in a way and play games that aren't completely oversaturated with players but have enough general interest that would get people in. I think you can really like look at it from like a tech, like a gamified science thing. But then also too, right? If you're like, okay, that's not really what I'm interested in. Let me try to find a different avenue. Cause at the end of the day, it has to be stuff that you enjoy and makes you happy, right? Okay, maybe, maybe we don't hate this. Maybe this is working out. You guys really can't tell, but like, 
here. You can see we're filling in the spider. So I think we just have a couple more that we need to do. So it's not bad. It's not, yeah, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I definitely think there is a market for people living vicariously through others in terms of like what their experiences are. So somebody who, you know, might really enjoy the outdoors and either one can't afford it or doesn't have the mobility to do so, they'll get to experience that on your channel. And I think that's really cool. Okay, that kind of worked. That kind of worked. I don't hate it. So see, here's what it looks like not French not filled. And here's the French not filled. Okay. Okay, new uses for French knots. I'm, I'm slowly, I'm slowly coming around, you know? I'm slowly coming around to these ridiculous creatures. I've been thinking about, because guys, once we finish this project, we will have completed all of the craft kits that are not of the cross stitching variety. And so I'm a little bit like, I have a little bit of anticipatory anxiety, I think, in trying to figure out what the hell we're gonna do next. So, you know, obviously, like I said, we have tons of projects to get back to, um, but yeah, I think we'll probably, I'll probably have to do a poll, not have to, I'll probably do a poll over on the gram once we get to a point where I think we're going to be nearing completion of this to figure out what we want to do next. Um, because again, our main crafts of choice are cross stitching, needle felting, and beading. Though I do find that the beading doesn't really show up on stream very well because I use seed beads and they're so freaking tiny that you kind of never are not really seeing much. Um, but yeah, we have tons of cross stitching projects on the go. So it might be one, we got to figure out what the craft we are going to jump back into. And then once we figure out what the craft is, then we got to figure out what we're going to be doing with said craft because we got lots of options but we will cross that bridge when we get there. For now, we are filling in spiders. But it is something that I've been thinking about. And I'm like, yeah, not like nervous, but like kind of nervous. It feels like a bit of an end of an era. It's kind of like when I finished Studio Ghibli month and I was like, now what? <laughs> now what? And then we just ended up working on our Howl's Moving Castle cross stitch anyway. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, first knot. Yeah, I'm actually quite impressed with how it's turning out. So first we backstitch the outline, um, which is just like your continuous sort of like looping of thread. And then yeah, the fact that this is strategic knots that then fill in the body is quite interesting. So this is a kit by um, Stitch with Sky. So I've never, like I said, I've never embroidered before, um, but I have cross stitched. So some of these skills are transferable but like the satin stitch and different elements of this I have never done before. And also too, I've only ever done or only ever used French knots as like little accents. Like I've made a cross stitch that has mushrooms and then you would use a French knot for like the little spots. 
but I've never used French knots as a way to like fill something in, which is really interesting. So I'm learning new, new tips and tricks. There's actually a bunch. So one of like the thread brand DMC, not sure what you're talking about, but looks neat. Hey man, that's fair. That's fair. You're like, I don't know what you're saying, but I like looking at it and that's all that matters. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. There's a um a bleh, 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 words. There's a thread brand thread brand named DMC, and they release a bunch of like free patterns every month. And they do a lot of cross stitch ones, obviously, but they also do um some embroidery ones as well and I remember a few years ago they actually came out with a line of different teacups and I thought they were so cute but of course I had never done embroidery before so I was like ooh I don't know how to do those things but now I feel like I could actually whip up some of those because I know what I'm doing now maybe can't not entirely sure it's not something I would do but yeah exactly yeah sometimes it's just interesting to see the process just craft vicariously through others. I think this is good. I was thinking of maybe that I needed, I was thinking maybe I needed to add another French knot at the top, but we seem to have successfully like filled this in. So I think that's it for this, for now. We do also need to French knot the center of this flower. So we'll do that too the non-existent flower. So we basically are doing all of the components except for the petals and the petals will be like the very last thing that we do, which is interesting. <laughs> what are your current hobbies of choice? What are, what are your, what are your go-to hobbies? I was born and raised in Canada, um, but I currently live in the UK. So I currently live in jolly old England just outside of London and it will be my sixth year here but I was born and raised in Northern Ontario <laughs> now you don't even have a passport but you do so much traveling in nature you know so you get your own travels on <laughs> Ooh. A lot of people don't. I think especially too, like if you're still able to travel, cause like the thing with North America, like with Canada and the US, they're already so massive. And usually you just need a photo ID. I don't know if it's changed now, but before just to travel domestically, you just needed photo ID. So, Windsor's right across from the short road. Yeah, it is, it is Windsor, Ontario. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. Yeah, I've never been to Windsor, um, but I've been to the Sioux. But yeah, all, all those little little places kind of along that coast that's just like a river throw away. Little video games and tables, so I can draw paint. Can I have the, ooh! Oh, so you can rock climb again. Ooh, I've, I used to, Liam and I would rock climb, well, got into rock climbing. Do you do indoor bouldering or top rope? What side, what sort of rock climbing do you do? I like that. I only went when I was like, you know, look at this video. oh yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Cause it, it's 19 in Canada, in Ontario, but it's uh, 21 in the, in the States. So I'm sure, I'm sure that happens a lot is there's a, there's a, when you turn 19, you cross over for, for a night of debauchery. <laughs> Indoor top rope is more my speed. Try to boulder more. Yeah, that's so cool. That's one of the things that Liam and I got into. And then, um, yeah, we stopped again. Well, first of all, pandemic, we stopped going. Um, and then trying to get into it. There's this there's this silly thing happening right now in, in like the London area. So we have this thing called the low emission zone and the ultra low emission zone. 
So basically, it's this arbitrary circle around London that they're trying to encourage people to stop using their vehicles, essentially, to try to create like a greener environment. And so there's this thing called the ultra low emission zone. And basically, if you drive your diesel car into this zone, you have to pay the government money. So it's meant to be a dissuader to driving pet like diesel cars and stuff in the area. But this year, as of I think August, they're extending that low emission zone to where I live. Um, and we currently have a diesel car. So every time we turn on our car, we would have to pay money to drive it. So we have to switch out the car um, this year, but the reason, so again, the re why I'm saying this is because the rock climbing gym we would go to is in that ULEZ zone. So for us to go, it would cost money to go to the rock climbing wall, use the rock climbing services, and then just to physically drive there, it would cost money on top of the gas petrol it would take to drive there. We do opposite side of the road, opposite side of the car, which was a bit of a mind fuck for me to wrap my brain around before. Cause I remember when my partner picked me up from the airport, I instinctively went to one side of the car as the passenger, but I was actually on the driver's side. And he looked at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like getting into the car. And he's like, that's the wrong side. And my brain was like, what? Yeah, no, it's so silly. Um, luckily, like, you know, we, like that's what we're focusing on. But the good thing in a roundabout really stupid way is once we get a new car that will allow us to drive without get, having to pay money, we can start going back to the rock climbing gym because it won't cost us as much to do so. <laughs> cause I do, we really enjoyed it. Like bouldering, I think we did mostly bouldering cause we could just get the shoes and didn't have to worry about like renting the harnesses and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that was my roundabout way of saying that I too like rock climbing, but various things have prevented me from doing such. <laughs> Not a chance in hell. It's strange. It's like, yeah. Yeah, I know um, other... Because Australia as well, they do opposite side of the road. Um, I don't know if they're opposite side of the vehicle as well. I'm not sure. But yeah, there's a few different places that have different... I don't think... Germ I think Germany it's not. I think it's the same side that it would be in North America, but I can't remember. But yeah, it took it took some getting used to. It also took some getting used to to get used to roundabouts because I'm so used to like four way stop signs. Um, so I had basically I have a like I had a license I have a license I was able to legally drive in in England, but it was so different in terms of how to drive that I ended up getting driving lessons just so that I could like know how to drive in England because it just felt so foreign and confusing to me. But you know, I'm going on six years here so I still don't enjoy driving here. Everything is so much smaller. Like the roads are narrower and all that kind of stuff too. Um, so I don't enjoy it, but I can do it. I am capable of doing it. Oh yeah, that would be really nice. I feel definitely like Switzerland, Austria, Germany are like, if you are a really like outdoorsy person, those are the kinds of countries that would be really awesome to go to. I'm trying to think, I, the only place I went in, cause I used to, years ago, I dated somebody who was Austrian from Austria and um, where he was situated, we could take a ferry over to Germany. We could drive a little bit to get into Switzerland. So everything was like quite sort of situated where it is. You studied abroad in Germany and it's 10 out of 10. Oh, that's really cool, Meg. Even the Italian Alps. Yeah, definitely. I think any, any sort of mountain experience would be amazing. Poland too. Yeah, that would be really cool. Trying to make a more, more of a circle. It's kind of happening, sort of, kind of. 
Yeah, the only thing I remember about Switzerland, besides the fact that um, it was easier for me to fly in to Zurich than it was for me to fly into the Austrian airport, because it was a lot farther away um, to where I was going. But the only other uh, thing that I remember doing in Switzerland besides taking the airport, like going to that particular airport, was going to a chocolate factory. And we got, I got to tour like a Swiss chocolate factory and that was really fun. <laughs> we only have old garbage dumps to ski on here in mid- Oh no! Yeah, there's not bad, actually Ontario has some not bad ski, ski hills. And you, there's nice ones in the States, just not, you know, in Michigan per se. Cause there's like Big Sur and Big Bear and like different things like that. Um, obviously in Canada, it's like Banff, um, Vancouver, like those are the areas that have really good mountains and skiing options. Yeah. I've never actually been to Vancouver. I've been as far as like the BC um, Alberta border because all my family is originally from Alberta. Um, so every time we go visit there, we usually always make a um, make an effort to go to Banff because we, again, love mountains, love national parks. Love the outdoors. We're trying to make this a bit more circular. This could have gotten away with being a bit more oval, but it's going all right. I think we need another granola bar break though. I'm still waiting for Nature Valley to sponsor me. <laughs> Just because I always eat their granola bars on stream. Oh no, it's not being admitted, just getting fluids. Okay, oh my goodness. Yeah, no wonder. I would be stressed too. I guess it's one of those like they'll send her home, have that happen, and then kind of check back. I guess in a few days to see if that's made any difference. That's really frustrating. What's for lunch? Okay, we're gonna put another one here and then I think one more and then that'll be the fill. I think that is done and then we're gonna be doing French knot clusters in a three at the end of each of the stocks and I think we're just meant to alternate it's I'm under the impression that we're hmm. I have that that turns chicken alfredo. Ooh, alfredo. I haven't had like a cream based pasta sauce in a long time. I'm trying to think the last time. I guess because I normally don't get pasta when I go to restaurants. But I really should. Like, I've not had a cream based sauce in a minute. Ooh, 
like a spicy Alfredo. That's even nicer. Here we go. Another French knot cluster completed. So now we're off to do more French knots, but we get to use a different color, which is very exciting. But yeah, I think I'll have to double check the instructions, but I'm pretty sure we're just sort of like alternating these different orange colors just to add some like depth and variation, I think. I think that's what's meant to be happening. Alfredo's your favorite. Yeah, I don't know why we don't. I guess because like we usually will end up making like a, a bolognese sauce like on our own and things. But I don't know. We'll do like a cheese, to be fair, we'll do, usually if we're doing a creamy sauce, we're doing like a cheese sauce and we'll do like homemade, like cheesy pasta and stuff, but yeah. Liam's got a few, one of his coworkers is retiring. So there's like a leaving dinner or something this day this week. So I'm gonna be left to my own devices in terms of dinner options. So maybe I should treat myself with some like funny, I know my husband hates bolognese after I spent eight hours making it. No. That's wild. I wonder why. Does he find it like really rich or something? It doesn't like tomatoes. Yeah, I guess so. I feel like a lot of saucy foods kind of look like that. Does he not like, is he not a fan of like curries either? You know, like a, like a chicken korma or like a tikka masala or something. Cause those can look pretty, pretty barf like in some, in some iterations. Okay. Two and three. So we're alternating. No, he likes those. That's funny. It's just the bolognese that looks that looks rank. That's funny. Okay, let's cut a decent amount. But we only really want to do this once. So I'm wondering, so it's, we're meant to be doing clusters of three. Mm. It does, but it is so good. I have a tomato phobia, so I just leave the lumps out. Yeah, that's fair. You can't, you can't have the, uh, the like chunky tomato. You almost have to have almost like the pureed stuff. Okay. But yeah, so it's meant to be like clusters of, of two different colors of, orange so i don't know if i'm meant to do like for instance so all of these will eventually have little orange clusters on them so i'm not sure if i should do like for instance for every three on a cluster i should do like two of one color orange one of the other color orange or if i'm meant to do each cluster in one color does that make sense i'm not sure Maybe I'll consult the instructions and see if they have any more insight into the matter. Oh no, according to this picture, it looks like they're just clustering three of the same colored stitch. Okay. I knew if we, if we took a look at this, then it would be okay. And this one, one and two. Okay. okay, I think I figured it out. I think, I think I did. I think I figured it out. Okay. Let's get, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's nine of these. Okay. So that means one will have more of one color than the other. 
And I think we should do more of color number three. Oh, I think I just mixed them up. Based on this, I think this is color number three, and this is color number two. Hopefully. <laughs> I could color match them right now. Actually, maybe we do that. Since we have the ability, let's color match these, just so I don't confuse myself. This is the Thread Bible, and it has every iteration of DMC colors. So just to make sure we didn't cock this up, four, what is it, seven, one, so I think you're this color. Yes, okay. So that means you are number three. Okay, okay. <laughs> now we con can confirm. That's what I thought, but I'm like, we have the ability to double check, so let's do that. first and then I think I'm going to do more this color because we're using the other orange for this big petal here yeah I think that's the plan okay okay well it's getting a little windy out I think it's gonna come in like a lion tomorrow to do like clusters we might need to move oops that's not what we need are we gonna have to move this i think we'll be all right i'm gonna move this down just so we have better ease of access but the top one here i have to check to make sure it doesn't like conflict with the hoop underneath might be okay we'll try it if not we might have to rearrange What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that right here. It just helps to um, it's like just a stand. So instead of me holding onto the hoop while I'm stitching, it holds it for me, so I don't have to use it. Yeah. So it's just me clamping this. Um, so instead, because I've in the past, what I would do is hold this with my arm. Um, and then that can sort of lead to like stiff joints and things over time. So this then takes the pressure off of physically holding it. And then I can just focus on using my arms for stitching. Sometimes the thing that it's holding is a bit too heavy. And so this like little section at the end, you can like hook this under your like lap. So it's meant to be like a lap stand. Um, but luckily this is light enough that it can sort of just hold itself up, which is ideal. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get out of my brain, cat. <laughs>
There's a lot of different stands out there. There's like massive standing ones as well. Chicken, oh no, yeah, sometimes they're not ideal. Is it like really sort of kind of flaky and gritty tasting? Okay, here we go. Little cluster here. It's squishy. Eww, that's weird. Probably like freezer burnt and got so much moisture in it, maybe. Let's make sure that this is looking alright. Yeah. <laughs> One of the no goes. <laughs> I've had Stofus frozen ones before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've not had like, I used to have those, um, like frozen hungry man dinners every once in a while. It was like a fun treat in our household growing up. Like, oh, let's have a TV dinner, like for funsies. But a lot of those don't um, have gluten-free options. Spongy <laughs> meat. Ew, but um, tch. <laughs> um, but yeah, so a lot of them is not, oh, it's beyond me. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But yeah, a lot of the, um, there are gluten-free frozen dinners. Um, there's not as many though. And they're not like in that traditional kind of TV dinner style, but they'll do like your lasagnas and your different like pasta dishes and stuff. The yeah, the mini, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the ones that come with, all oh, the applesauce was actually really nice. Like the spiced apple. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. cuisines I've seen them I don't know if you know what we had we didn't have those we did lunchables so obviously like the not microwave version if you got a lunchable in your lunch like that was a big deal especially the mini pizza ones the mini pizza ones were incredible and then like the there was like the cheese and cracker ones those ones were mid Oh no, a brownie or ice cream and accidentally heated up your ice cream. Yeah, I would be upset too. I would be very upset. <laughs> that would have been a travesty. Love Lunchables. Yeah, the pizza ones. And the cheese was always just that, li you know, like, well, you know, you know it's fake cheese, but there's something about it. Something about that shiny plastic cheese that just hit different, you know? Lunchables rock, most of you still eat them. Ha! <laughs> yeah, true. They're quite an easy snack and you get, you know, they, they provide you with all the things. I basically add all Lunchables, true. Honestly, like when we were kids, we didn't realize it, but we were being taught how to meal prep. You know, Lunchables give you all your main, you know, food categories. Yeah, absolutely. The adult Lunchable, I love that. That makes a lot of rotis with pizza sauce. Yeah! Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Just like, look, you know, like children delicacies, you know? There were just certain things. There we go. Here's our first two little flower clusters. Excellent, excellent. The deluxe one. Ooh, come to drink it. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, that's true. They usually, don't they usually come with Capri Suns? That was good. Oh, I always make, you always make a mess. If you don't hit the Capri Sun in a very specific way, you get Capri Sun splooge all over your desk. It was always a problem. That, and also if you ever got fruit cups in your lunch and you opened them the wrong way and they accidentally pushed on them and then they like popped out, you know, and you always get like cocktail fruit juice on your desk. There were certain foods that were always very like messy if you didn't deal with them properly. Yeah, always book the back of the Capri Sun. Yeah, right? No. <laughs> You're too strong for the Capri Sun. The, per the Capri Sun can't handle your muscles.
but that's fine. It's all good. They don't have to be perfect. Give you a little circle. Where you're supposed to yeah, it's true. Yeah, they're like in this general area, and then it's like. With some of those, any of those straws, you have to put a little bit of elbow grease in there. So if you try to line it up and then push it in slowly, it doesn't work. And then if you try to push it in forcefully, then you can't get the aim properly. So it's just a little bit of chaos. It's just a little bit of chaos. Okay. We need the two more. Go over here next. Look, Capri Sun. Mm -hmm. Did you guys ever go through a Sunny D phase and then when your parents told you it wasn't real orange juice? <laughs> Sunny D was like the strangest thing. You such a thumb. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's true. You have to in order to get the accuracy. But yeah, Sunny D like had its chokehold on us in the 90s, 2000s. And I remember there was like a, there was the regular Sunny D and I don't know if this was a fever dream. I remember there being like a red Sunny D as well. That was like a, it was like a rare thing. It wasn't like, you know, it was like a special edition Sunny D or there was, yeah, I remember there being two kinds and I don't, I don't know. I need to Google this now. Now I'm convinced that this was like a fever dream that I had. Sunny D red. Yeah, there was a red one, wasn't there? Oh, there's a, f Sunny D has their own flavor archives, you guys. Interesting, interesting. Legendary flavors. Interesting. So there's Tangy Original. I didn't even realize that it wasn't just, like I didn't realize that it wasn't just orange. It was like citrus overload. So there's Tangy Original, Orange Smooth, and then this must have been the one, Orange Strawberry? That must have been, that must have been the red one. Yeah, they still have it. Or was it, no, it wasn't Orange Peach. Maybe it was that one. I don't know. I'm surprised there's this many flavors. There's a blue one too, guys. Did we know there was a blue Sunny D? Interesting. I wonder, I don't think it has the same, does it still have the same mass appeal? Yeah, it is a pop socket. It's a, it's an amethyst pop socket. Yeah, <laughs> you haven't seen it in years, interesting. That's funny, I feel like they're out of fashion now. I feel like pop sockets were a huge thing and now they're like, there's like cell phone, like chains almost. It's sort of like hearkening back to when you used to get cell phone charms on your little like flip phones. And now you have like, it's almost like a wristlet for your phone as opposed to a pop socket. I don't think I could have my phone without a pop socket. Every once in a while I would pop the case off cause I have like wireless charging. And sometimes I'd hold my phone without the case on it slash without the pop socket. Um, and I was like, how do people have phones without them? Yeah, see, I don't like holding one either. I'm like, I don't know how to hold a phone properly without a pop socket now. I'm like, there's not enough, there's not enough for me to hold on to. How cool now, older. Yeah, <laughs> you're so, you're so forward thinking. Hey man, cool and not cool is a state of being, I think. I don't know, <laughs> I'm just talking out of my butt. Like I've noticed, especially in the last few days, I don't know what's been going on, but I feel like I've been dropping so much lately. Like I just go to grab things and instead it just falls out of my hand. So I feel like my phone, there's canola oil 
in Sunny D? Interesting. Yeah, it did leave a film. Jess, you're just like blowing everyone's mind. Yeah, that's, that's weird. Why is there oil and juice? That's very strange. That doesn't make any sense. That's the smoothness room. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, eh? And I guess that's why you needed to shake it all the time. Big corn got in there deep with lots of food. It's true. It's true. I know it's actually so funny. Um because I think a lot of foods, like brands that exist internationally, um, the UK versions of them are like different taste wise because they have regulations about like using high fructose corn syrup and different things like that. Um, to the point where like different foods, there's like an international, like an American food section in a lot of the grocery stores. And a lot of them will have like labels on them, especially on the candy. It'll be like, has been, you know, this dye has been known to cause hyperactivity in children. Like they have to have different labels to be like, um, we wouldn't have this here sort of thing. Would love some regulations, please. Yeah. It was really funny because Liam um, has been watching a lot of this. There's a YouTube channel, I think it's called Business Insider. Um, and they do a lot where they'll highlight different restaurants or different um, businesses, like food businesses, and how they do, um, yeah, the Cadbury cream eggs. Oh, oh, to die for. So sweet though, you need like a coffee or like a bitter tea to go with them for sure. Um, but yeah, so he watches these business insider things and they'll be like, oh, this new, it's usually places in New York and how they've like, you know, managed to sustain and keep their business um, afloat over however many years and stuff. And so there was this one that was like this cheesecake. It wasn't the Cheesecake Factory, but it was a Cheesecake Factory in New York and how they like revolutionized like their automation and they're still able to, you know, do whatever, whatever. And so I asked him last night, I was like, you know, you're watching all of these shows highlighting these different like restaurants and businesses. Would you ever want to go to visit them and like actually go and see them. And he's like, no, absolutely not. Cause looking at the portion sizes and the amount of food and like, he's like, it actually makes me kind of sick looking at it. So he, they were showing a highlight of this cheesecake factory restaurant and how the portions, like they had these, like, you know when freak shakes were a big thing? And so it was this giant milkshake with a whole slice of cheesecake on it. And these like massive stacks and stacks of pancakes. And he's like, that's like, he, like in his brain, it's like it didn't commute, like compute. He's like, this is like, it's too much. He's like, just looking at it just feels so sweet and sickly and over the top to him. He's like, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing too, right? I think like if you're used to having massive portions and I think takeaway and like taking away stuff is a lot bigger in North America too, which is helpful. Like you said, if there are really big portions cause then you can take them home and heat them up for multiple days. I'm a big fan of leftovers. I'm team leftover all the way. Like we'll make, what is it? I think Liam made pasta the other day. And like, I've had it for lunch for the last few days. Cause I'm like, I just love a leftover. I don't have to think about what to make for, you know? That's one of the biggest challenges of adulthood, guys, is deciding what to eat for dinner every day for the rest of your life. Like it takes up a lot of brain power. So if I can eat the same thing for multiple days in a row and not have to think about it, sign me up. Sign me up. Oh, we cut this before when we were practicing. I see, I see. I was like, why? this already this size. This was gross. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like eating food. It's true, it's true. I don't know if there's still a thing. Like I remember this was like a handful of years ago when those freak shakes became a really big, like new dessert trend where it was like, have a milkshake, but let me fill it with stuff all on top as well. So you need to like eat it. It's almost like, 
the dessert response to a Caesar. So I don't know if Caesars exist in the States, but they're a huge thing in Canada. They're basically like the Canadian version of a Bloody Mary. And I feel like Caesars and like Bloody Marys got real crazy for a second where people were making them and sticking skewers of like pickles and jalapenos and bacon and fried chicken and pizza slices all on top of that. And I feel like the freak shake was like the dessert iteration of when people started going nuts decorating their Caesars with garnishes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. So I think that, I think that's what happened. We just got really into like hat, like at what point is it a garnish? And at what point is it like a meal just served on a plate that, but it's a cup, you know what I mean? It's a meal served on top of a drink. It's not a garnish anymore. Or maybe it is, I don't know. Is it still a garnish? All right, we are almost done the French knots, which is pretty cool. Actually, we are almost, we've almost made it to six, you guys. This is actually pretty cool. That means we have, is there any more? French knots after this. I don't believe so. So then on Thursday, we'll be high lowing. What are they called? Short and long stitching. That's what it is. We have a restaurant calling one that's a Caesar bar. That's interesting. A whole Caesar bar. What a, like, that's wow. <laughs> I think it's a complicated meal. It's true, it is, it is. It's like eating a meal on hard mode. Mm-hmm, definitely. Okay. So yeah, let's finish these little, little flower French knots and then we'll Do some short and long stitching on Thursday. Oops, oops, oops. And if anyone has any raid suggestions, please let me know. Also guys, we are one follower away from 270 followers, which is very exciting. Cause you know, tomorrow is March and March is my birth month. And it would be really, really cool if we got to 300 followers um, by the end of March. Because last year we managed to get to 200 followers by the end of March. And so I think that would be really cool to do it again, but with a hundred more. No pressure though, you know? <laughs> I'm just saying. It would be really freaking cool, guys. <laughs> okay, let's let's finish these French knots. I'd follow again if I could. I know you would, Kat, and I appreciate you for it. I know, isn't that crazy? It's like, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir. I'm like, you guys are already, you guys have already followed. <laughs> I don't need to tell you again. <laughs> One, two. Cute. I am really enjoy. like I'm thinking like embroidery might be the way forward. Like we'll still cross stitch obviously, but I think in terms of like our ability to finish projects, I think we could probably hammer out many more embroidery projects. Like the turnover rate of them, I think is much higher. I'm gonna have to take a, I'm gonna take a look at those teacup ones, the teapot teacup ones, cause I think they would look really cute.
was thinking it might be fun to do another um, baking stream as well. But we have to figure out, because I was looking at other recipes and stuff. And obviously we want something that will then occupy us for the three hour time frame and not go over. But the gluten-free cup of tea, like little, little Miss Becky, who I've been getting all my recipes from. Oh, it was really funny actually. I was, um, we were watching Good Mythical Morning and we, they were ranking um, a certain ice cream brand. I've never heard of it, Tillamook ice cream. Um, but anyway, they were talking about different ice cream flavors. And one of the ice cream flavors that I really loved growing up was chocolate chip cookie dough. And of course, now having a gluten intolerance, the cookie dough obviously is full of the glutens, so I cannot have it. Oh, Tillamook cheese is delicious. Oh, interesting, that's really cool. Um, so then I Googled it. I was like, oh, I wonder if there's a gluten-free, like, uh, cookie dough, like chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream that exists. And my girl Becky on Gluten Free Cup of Tea has a recipe for no turn, no churn, um, chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream. I would love to just buy a store bought version, but I like that it exists. Yeah, exactly. Oh, is it? Yeah, I wonder, cause yeah, cause flour is a raw ingredient, so you technically have to cook it. So I wonder, it's worth looking into. I know sometimes I'll have like cookie dough flavored like protein bars that won't have gluten in them, but it's worth looking into. The other thing that I find interesting, but it's not, I guess it doesn't really matter, but usually when you're looking for like, they call them free from here, um, but free from ice, like gluten free ice cream usually comes under the free from category. And so it also is dairy free which I don't necessarily need. Sometimes I just want a gluten-free dairied option, but there is. But yeah, that's interesting actually. If there's like, they're like flourless versions. This is sounding like creepy circus music. Yeah, exactly. There's lots and lots of recipes. So that might need to happen. Even just to make like cookie dough that can be eaten as cookie dough. That became a little trend for a minute, eh? Where everyone was like ma literally just making cookie dough as a dessert to consume and not to make cookies with. There's actually full on companies that just make like dessert cookie dough. Oops. Yeah, I got over that, yeah. <laughs> Again, it was another thing that was like this niche little fad and then. Because right, the food would taste better. Oh, that's true. Yeah, actually true. I did find, again, sometimes I don't know if it's because of the thing or if it's because of the gluten-free of it all, but I think I did have like an edible cookie dough one time and it just tasted very like gritty. So that wasn't ideal. Yeah, it's gritty. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's really not. Yeah, give me those raw eggs. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Pills really changed the recipe. Yeah, it is. Cause I think those eggs are what kind of bind it together, obviously. Okay, is that, are those all of our little fleurs? Is that all of our French knots? Oui, oui, I believe. We have completed our French knot portion of the embroidery kit.
But yes, if anyone has any raid suggestions, please let me know. If not, we'll go and see which ones of our wonderful friends are online. So we have completed the satin stitching of the top. Very nice, very nice. Satin stitch bat. We have done some French knot spiders. A French knot flower center. Oh, that's not auto-focusing. There we go. And some little, little orange French knots. Our introduction to some color on this piece is looking real cute, friends. It is looking real cute. All right, let us go and see who is online. Like I said, we will be back here in March on Thursday to do more, move on to the next. Ooh, so many friends are online. So many friends are online. Who is online? What's going on? Ooh, Bex is online felting things. Sutherland Handmade is doing a style swap Kermit drawing. Seabird Studios making a chicken rug. Cute. Maker Bug is nostalgic crafting. Well, we might have to go and see her because she literally has my name in her stream title. So I think that needs to happen. We need to go and say hi to her. <laughs> And then we will, let me do the right message. Yeah, thanks for stopping by Jess. I will chat to you later. Have an amazing afternoon. Let's go and see Megan. I'm very excited to see what nostalgic crafts she is up to. It's gonna be good, it's gonna be good. Let's go, bye friends. <laughs>